Hello YouTube, DeVore here, and uh, welcome to a brand new school year with brand new videos. So I'm trying something new with my recording this year. I am going away from using the OneNote just because digitizing it was taking way too long. And I am starting to record using my document camera in my classroom. So uh, we'll see how this goes. This is my first recording. Um, and sorry in advance if I don't sound as peppy as usual. It's because my daughter was you know, generous enough to share her cold with me, and I'm kind of living off tea at the moment. So uh, if my voice starts to crack, I apologize in advance. So here we go. This is the task 1.1, Brutus Bites Back. We are in Math 3, using the integrated Math 3 from the Mathematics Vision Project. Um, as usual, these materials come out of Utah. So we are once again back with Carlos and Clorita. They are We've been following them since Math 1 on their business ventures. Back in Math 1, they started taking care of pets, and it's apparently turned into a very successful business. They are wanting to find a new dog food supplier for their pet sitting business. And they have a food, uh, it's called uh, Brutus Bites, and that is what the dogs eat. They have two possibilities for a new supplier for their dog food. We're going to look first at the Canine Catering Company. They sell seven pounds of food for $5. Carlos likes to think about things with graphs. So here's the graph he drew uh, of basically the input being how many pounds of food he needs and then the y-axis here, the output is how much he's going to spend. We're gonna start out by doing the equation for the function. Now, since it's a line, we need to figure out our slope and we can do that from our graph if you remember from math one usually I have you pick two points here on the graph have them be on corners it's just easier to figure out that way and then when we look at our rise and our run we're going up five to the right seven so our slope is five over so that, that's pretty straightforward from the graph. Now, if I want to use, say, slope-intercept form, which actually would be the easiest thing to use here, our intercept is here at y equals 0. So we have f of x equals 5 sevenths x. And it would be plus 0 here on the outside, but we, we really don't need to write that. You can write it if you'd like, if it helps you keep track, but for the moment I'm not going to write that. All right, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go to the next page here. Clarita thought about how much food they could buy for a given amount and drew this graph. So it's the same information but a slightly different look at it. Now our input is how much money she has to spend, so her budget, and she's trying to figure out how many pounds she can buy on that budget. Once again, it wants us to graph, it wants us to uh, write the function. So here are two points. We've got a point here and a point here. Let's draw our slope triangle like this. So she goes up seven to the right five. Her slope is then seven over five. Once again, I'm gonna use slope intercept because our intercept is very clearly marked here at y equals zero. I'm gonna call Clarita's function g. So we have g of x equals seven over five x. And again, you can put the plus zero there on the outside, but again, I'm not going to do that unless you really just need the placeholder. All right. So it's asking us now to compare some of these graphs. Write a question that would be most easily answered by Carlos's graph and then one that could be best answered by Clarita's graph. So for Carlos, we are asking, uh, given an amount of dog food, how much are you going to spend? How much does it 
cost. Clarita is given a cost, how much dog food? And you'll notice I phrased it in a very particular way because I wanted us to see something here. We basically have an input of dog food here on the top and an output of cost, so money. Whereas Clarita, we have an input of cost and an output of dog food. And that is a very important relationship when we're dealing with functions. We call these inverse functions. Now, inverse functions is an interesting relationship. Essentially, when two functions are inverses, we flip the inputs and the outputs. And the reason why we study this is because there are some times when, in, when our question, we, we might have a question, say in this case where we're looking at dog food to cost, but we can use that, that same information to flip it and say we have a budget and how much dog food do we have. And that is a very useful tool to be able to essentially reverse the question and still be able to answer it using the information you have. The way we write that in our math notation is we would say that f of x equals, it looks like this, it's this little to the negative one power, that's our way of saying inverse. Now the reason why we know that these are inverses is once again because we flipped our inputs and our outputs. And we have to flip every input and every output in order for it to work out. Okay, let's go to the uh, let's go to the next question here. We have use function notation to write the relationship. Well, we already started with that. We have f of x equals inverse of g of x. We can also write it as g of x is the inverse of f of x. Both are true in this case. And we can we use them somewhat interchangeably. All right, let's look at the next problem here. So this is their second company where Carlos, they sell eight pounds of Brutus Bites for $6 plus a flat $5 shipping charge. The company advertises that they will sell any amount of food at the same price price per pound. So let's look at Carlos likes to start with a number of pounds and then figure out how much it costs. So let's make a quick little table of values here that will help us. If we buy, so we've got pounds and then we've got dollars. So if we buy no dog food at all, uh, just press ship we're still charged five dollars for the shipping. And then we have, if we buy eight pounds of Brutus Bites, it's six dollars for that plus this. Six plus five is eleven. Now the reason why I left the gap in here is because I think that we can figure out what this will be halfway in between. In this case, four pounds. If it's six dollars for eight pounds. We can safely assume then that it's going to be three dollars for four pounds. Five plus three is eight. The reason why I did that is because 11 would be off of our chart. Let's go ahead and graph this. So we've got zero pounds is five dollars. Four pounds is eight dollars. And there we go, there's our there's our relationship. Now if we want to do Clarita's approach where she starts with a budget and she wants how many pounds she can buy with that, cool thing is that we've already done part of the work because we know already a pounds to dollars relationship. So if we want to do Clarita's, we're going to have money be the input, pounds be the output. Well, we know that 
five dollars gets us zero pounds. We also know that eight dollars gives us four pounds, eleven dollars gives us eight pounds, like that. We literally just took this table and we flipped our inputs and our outputs. That is the sheer convenience of inverse functions. It basically means that if we do the work for one function, we have done 99% of the work for the inverse. Very, very convenient. So once again, let's go ahead and graph this. We have $5 gets us zero pounds. And then $8 gets us four pounds. And I think it's off the chart now. So we'll just like that. So there are our two graphs. Now, something I want you to notice is that we've got these points right here. It's almost like we took, it's, it's almost like we flipped them, reflected them over each other a little bit. It's a cool little relationship. And it's something that we're going to explore more in later tasks. Let's go ahead, finish up the task here. What is the relationship between these two functions and how do you know? Well, we know that they are inverse functions. Because we flipped the inputs and outputs. And I'm going to reiterate this because it's going to come up again. Make sure that when you're making inverse functions that you flip every input and every output. Otherwise, you are going to have a very bad time. And once again, we're going to write the relationship between our two functions. We didn't really give these names, but we can totally do it right now. Um, let's see, we're going to call this, let's see, we've already used F and G, so I'm going to use H and P, just for convenience sake. So Carlos is H, Clarita is P. So h of x equals the inverse of p of x, and p of x is equal to the inverse of h of x. So here, here's a question here. Now that we've done all that stuff with the vocabulary, which company should Clorita and Carlos buy their Brutus Bites from? Well, let's look at a couple of these numbers here from our other side. So here we have, if we, if we want to buy eight pounds of Brutus Bites from the second company, it costs us $11. Whereas when we were looking at the other company from back at the beginning of the task here, um, let me put the graph back over for you. Um, we can buy seven pounds for $5. So it is substantially cheaper at the beginning for them to buy from the other company. But let's kind of figure out here what our, what our other thing might be. So if we have this equation here, let me just write it down here. So we have, this is the first company. And then the second company, we wanna use, pounds to dollars, let's see here, we go, our slope is up one, two, three, over one, two, four, like that, and we start at five, so h of x is three-fourths x plus five. So what this means, if we look at our rate of change here, the first one starts slower, but starts growing a lot, but it grows a lot faster than the other one. So we can use some algebra and we can kind of figure it out, but it's really above, you want to go kind of above eight pounds is where you want to use the second company. And about below anything below that you'll want to go with the first company and it's there's some decimals involved but this is a pretty good pretty good approximation of where this ends up um, 
so it just depends i guess on how big their shopping trip is they should not commit to one company uh if they're if they're consistently making big orders though they really should just go with the second company right so that is the 1.1 brutus bites back task from math three if you have any questions please feel free to email me and i will answer your questions as best i can if you like what you see here please remember to like and subscribe and i will do my best to keep making more of these hope you guys have a great day bye bye